He is the greatest motorcycle racer in the world. There is no equal to Jeremy Showtime McGrath. He has come from a faraway land, a decorated world champion who has challenged McGrath all season long. Can David Billiman pull off the biggest upset in Supercross history, or will McGrath win again tonight and take home yet another championship? In the 125 East ranks, three young men have one more race to settle their championship battle. The talented and very fast Stefan Moncada, the consistent and experienced Brock Sellers, and the young 16-year-old sensation Travis Pastrana. Three racers with one chance left to win the biggest prize of their young careers. It's EA Sports Supercross from nearby Chicago next on ESPN2. From Route 66 Raceway, just outside of Chicago, Illinois, it's Toyota Trucks Presents EA Sports Supercross. Yeah! Well, the fans are lined up here in the Chicago area getting ready for some great Supercross. Hello, everyone. I'm Art Ekman, along with former champion David Bailey. This is the first time in the sports history that uh, we've come to Chicago for a Supercross, and we have not just one, but we have two championships to be decided. Jeremy McGrath in the 250s. All he needs to do is finish in front of David Villeman, and he's got his seventh title, David. Well, it should be no problem for Jeremy. He's dominated the Supercross for 10 years. This year has been no different. His worst finish on the season was fourth. He crashed in the first turn and came from dead last to, get, to earn that. But the guy that's unfazed by the intimidation of McGrath is David Villeman. This young Frenchman is humble and has been dominant himself. Four wins on the season, 10 podiums. I think if anybody can stop McGrath, Villeman's the guy. In the 125 East, it's their last regular season race, and we've got three contenders. Any one of them could take the title. And this is good, but I wouldn't want to be in the shoes of Stefan Roncotta or Brock Sellers. These guys are tied up. They've got to be feeling the pressure. Roncotta's been the dominant rider on the season with four wins. Sellers has been the most consistent. Whoever beats the other guy wins the championship. But we've got Travis Pastrana back there, only six points behind. If he can win the race, and Sellers and Roncotta finish fourth or worse, Travis wins it all. Well, like you said, it comes down to the last race. The points are tied between these two guys, FMF Honda, Brock Sellers, Yamaha, Troy, Stefan, Roncotta. Stefan, what's going to be the strategy? Well, tonight my strategy is to win the race. You know, if I win the race, there is no more strategy, nothing to worry about. So I'm going to go there and then give it 100% and try to uh, pass the finish line, jump in first place. And what about you, Brock? You had the points lead early. You were consistent all year long, but now you got to let it all hang out. Uh, the first turn's really tight, so I'm going to try to get through the first turn and put in, you know, a great race. Try to give 120% as always, and when the checkered flag flies, hopefully the FMF Honda will come out on top. Well, there is one other rider in the points picture, and that is the rookie, Travis Pastrana. Six points down. Travis, what's your strategy tonight? I just got to go out there, have a good time, put in 110% like I always do every weekend. You know, I've had a learning experience my first rookie season, so I'm kind of up and down, but I've won two races. Hopefully, and put the arm on top of the podium tonight. All right. There you have it. Three guys, 15 laps, one championship to be decided. Thanks, Davey. David Bailey, where do you see the difficulties here? The start here in Chicago is shorter than usual, which makes the reaction time out of the gate so important. A tight first corner. That's going to be a log jam. Through a rhythm section, back across in front of the start, into a chicane, into the first whoop section. Three foot high bumps these guys take into another rhythm section, a sharp left, onto the first triple. Another left, another triple. This is the biggest triple right here as they make this left hand corner into another rhythm section. Another whoop section, but these they'll be able to stay wide open across the top. Another chicane, back across in front of the start, and the finish right there. The lap time's here about 10 seconds longer than normal, so this will be a physical battle. The 125 riders are now getting ready for their first qualifying round. Co-points leader Brock Sellers, Travis Pastrana, and the former 125 West champion Nathan Ramsey are the most notables in this opening heat. Qualifying procedures for the 125's top nine riders transfer from the qualifying heats into the main event with four riders coming out of the last chance qualifier, rounding out the 22 rider field. Where's Brock, David? It looks like Brock is lined up all the way to the inside. He's got one rider between him, that's number 45, Tyler Evans, and Ben Pastrana. So they're expecting this first corner to be tight, and obviously the inside is where they want to be. 
The 30-second board is up. Qualifying well is a must. Getting that best gate selection for the main event, especially with this tight and narrow first turn. Number 18, Sellers on the FMF Honda. Our first qualifying heat for the 125s is underway from Chicago. Brock Sellers is boxed in, David. Brock Sellers going down right there on the inside, number 18. And Ryan Clark and Jason Frank also involved there with that first turn melee. Sellers will have a huge assignment now out front. Kramas, Pastrana, and Brandon Jasmine. Oh, look at that. 73, Paul Carpenter goes for the unscheduled ride. Pastrana came into the season a little worried about his start, but he's in a prize position right now. It is so important to get out of that gate early. Get a great reaction and beat the guys next to you so you don't have to worry about being cut off. That's what Travis did. He beat... Both the guys to the inside of him. Look at the reaction time he got. Gets a great start. Cuts off the two guys to the inside of him. One of those was Sellers. Gets on the brakes. Causes a little bit of a log jam there. And Sellers got caught in it. Sellers, who had won two heats prior to this one coming into the race, is in last place battling back. There you see him working his way through the pack. Not the way you want to start your championship run. He's already nervous enough. This could be good, though. This could break the ice for him a little bit. Travis out front, just having things his way. There you see the smile. He's probably wearing one of those right now under that helmet. James Suzuki, Roger DeCosta's learned not to smile until you see the checkered flag. Travis starting to pull a lead now on Jessamine as he finds his rhythm. His smile is infectious. He's got so much energy. and uh, The only time I saw him not smile was after... The last round, he finished third. He knew that he dropped six points out of the championship race. That was critical. Puts a lot of pressure on him for this race. And I saw him see, he, he, he could feel the pressure there at the end of that race. Let's take a look at the battle for third. Number 38, Paul Curry, rookie of the year in 1995 of the Whoops. He gets by Jimmy Wilson into third. Gets over that double jump into the corner. That double jump is in a, a tricky place. It's right after the whoop section. So if you don't get to the whoops just right, you don't have the speed to jump it. He did, and that made the difference. Get an idea what it's like on these bikes. Our Parks Unlimited helmet camp rider is Ryan Clark. We're on board with Ryan. You see how <laughs> congested it gets. He wasn't able to triple it. He just doubled. Doubles right there to the inside. Makes a pass. This is another triple. He's only able to roll the first one, double out. He's making good decisions here in traffic, trying to work his way up, but that's the problem. If you don't get the start, you don't get to take the lines you want. That right there would normally be a triple for him, but he couldn't do it because the riders were in front of him. But there's some dozer tracks out there where they've done a little bit of work to the track. This is the first heat of the night. They watered a little bit. It'll take about three or four laps before the track really gets a good groove. We had lots of rain last weekend here in the Chicago area when they were building the track, but tonight they had to actually put water on it. It's slick, and the riders are having to be a little bit more careful approaching the jumps. It's not a problem with Travis Pastrana, though, David. Got a little shot of Ryan Clark going by with that helmet camera on top of his head. Sellards now has moved up from last to 13th. Oh, a crash right in front of Tyler Evans. Good reactions right there to not get caught up in that mess, but that's the problem again. You don't get to start. You have all kinds of things happen, and you always got to react. Tyler Evans, who rubbed plastic with Sellards in the first turn, went down hard. He finished on the podium in the season's opener. He's holding that left arm. He looks to be hurting. That's a shame. He's been riding better and better this season. David, it looked like to me he might have hit one of those tough blocks. Trying to cut the corner maybe a little bit too tight. Let's take another look. Now he had just worked his way into that little chicane right there. You see that tough block pop out right over there to the right side of the screen. And I think he was just trying to cut that a little bit too sharp, clipped it. Maybe somebody before him clipped it and knocked it out there a little ways, and he didn't react. Travis Pastrana way out in front. Expect some crowd pleasing addicts when we return to Route 66. With a Suzuki RM under you, and Team Suzuki behind you, there will be absolutely nobody in front of you. Just ask Suzuki's Greg Albertine, 1999 AMA 250 Motocross National Champion. 
Hampton models. Welcome back. All right, Ekman, David Bailey, Davey Coombs bringing you the action from the opening 125 East qualifier. Travis Pastrana has a big lead, and Brock Sellers is trying desperately to fight back through the pack after going down early. He's now up to 12th position. Remember, he has to make the top nine to qualify for the main event. Just earlier, a helmet cam rider went down. Rider's going down right in front of him. Well, that's Ryan Clark going down, so a rider took him out. That's the problem. If you follow too closely, you can get caught up in the problems of the riders in front of you. That looked like it was moving through one of those chicane areas, one of the few sections out here that is one line. He didn't really have a choice there. Travis Pastrana, only six points behind the co-leaders, has a shot at the title in his very first pro season, but it looks like he's having a good time out there right now, David. Well, you know, he always has that smile. He always talks about how much fun he's having or that he's going to have, and it looks like he's having fun out there. Mr. Pure Excitement on his white flag lap, looking for his sixth heat win in eight races. He's fun to watch no matter where he is on the racetrack. And he comes from behind. That's exciting. He's jumping a little something extra down that straightaway through the rhythm. Here he comes up to the triple again. Pastrana saluting the fans. Let's see what he does on the next triple. A heel clicker. Well, there's the difference right there. He's able to pull off some of his X game tricks. A heel clicker right there. Here comes another triple. Uh, he doesn't do it. He kind of shakes his head to the crowd like, sorry. Couldn't do it. Well, this time it wasn't the rider in the way. The track's just a little damp. I think he's just being wise, David Bailey, and not trying it, despite what the fans actually want to see him do. Now, watch this. Excellent control. Rides a wheelie all the way down the straightaway over all those bumps. People love this kid. Estrada not far away from the checkered flag. Maybe he's got something special in mind for that finish line job. Let's check it out. Oh! No hands on the landing. Try that. Might be dangerous to your health. Right now, Sellers in seventh place. Down the whoop section. Here's the co-points leader trying for the best gate position he possibly can get in the main event. He's moved into seventh now with... Uh, the crosshairs on sixth place. He's chasing Randy Bellotti for six. Cuts inside, takes the checkered flag. A nice move by Sellards. So Sellards does the best job he can after coming from last place to sixth here in the first qualifying heat for the 125s. A fine ride, but the problem with finishing that far back is his pick to the gate for the main event is going to push him pretty far to the outside. That, that's, I don't think that's where he really, really wants to be. Taking a look at the wrenchhead.com page results. Pastrana adjustment to Ramsey. Sellers made it. Our helmet cam guy, Clark, also into the main event. Let's hear from our winner and Racer X's, Davey Coombs. Take it away, Davey. Travis, way to come out firing. Right, well, thanks a lot. My arm got me out to a great start. This track is really technical. It's hard to do everything every lap, and it's long. So hopefully um, I've been working really hard. Maybe my endurance will pay off this track. Hopefully get a championship, but if not, definitely want to go for the win. You're certainly off to a good start. Hey, thanks a lot, Davey. Travis Pastrana has issued the challenge to the other title contenders. Look at the wheelie technique of Mr. Excitement. We'll be back to see if Stefan Roncotti can answer Pastrana's challenge. Heat 2 coming up. Call 1-800-CLASSIC today. Welcome back as Toyota Trucks presents EA Sports Supercross from nearby Chicago. Already the 32nd board is up. Stefan Roncata and Ernesto Fonseca, the defending champion in this one. He was the fastest in the early practice. He's had a, a, very, a very tough season. His last round in New Orleans, he looked like he might get pick up his first win of the season there. He went down the first lap. Maybe it'll be different for him here. Low well, points leader number 26 alongside his teammate Ernesto Fonseca. We're underway. Ah, clean first turn. Roncada makes it through, but he's not in the lead. Number 188. Mark Burkhardt gets the whole shot. Burkhardt, then Ernesto Fonseca. Looked like Fonseca had that whole shot. He just got it. Pickpocketed in the first corner by Burkhardt right there on the KTM. 
Burkhardt hasn't ridden in the last three races. His best for the first four races in the division was a ninth at Atlanta. And look at Roncata all the way into third already. We saw him mid-pack after that first corner. This guy is on fire. Fonseca goes for the triple. Burkhardt only the double, but Fonseca still just pulls up tight to the leader. Take another look at the start. Watch Fonseca gets out of there clean. Roncata did a couple of little wheelies there, had to back out of the power. Burkhardt gets to the corner first. I thought Fonseca would be able to control it from the inside, but Burkhardt was too strong. A surprise leader here at our second qualifying heat, making his mark for the new team KTM program. Yamaha Troy Riders in second and third. Fonseca looking for the right place on the track to make the pass. Burkhardt putting a fine out lap in the first lap here, unaffected by the pressure from both these Honda Yamaha Troy riders. I thought Fonseca, he went for a triple back there and thought he was going to be able to make the pass, but Burkhardt has held on. He's, he's actually got a little bit of a gap there. He's not blocking. Fonseca almost clips that tuck block. That's where Tyler Evans clipped one earlier and went down. Fonseca came into the season figuring that he wouldn't match last year's six wins, but he certainly was hoping for a win by now. Here on the loop section, he's looking for the move. Oh, my goodness. Hops into the corner early, good corner speed, and comes out the leader. Ernesto Fonseca from Costa Rica is our leader here in the qualifying round. Well, he didn't mean to do that. He came up a little short on that triple. I think he planned on going for it and then backed out the last second. That was a hard landing. I think the whoop section is the biggest separator out here tonight. In other sections, as long as the rider in front of you doesn't make a mistake, it's very difficult to pass. So Burkhardt now will be trying to hold off the co-points leader, Stefan Ronconnen, in this qualifying round. That will be difficult. You can see he's not following. He's working side to side, trying to keep Burkhardt guessing. That's how you force a rider into mistake. Patience is a difficult quality when you're running the shorter qualifiers, but that's what Stefan has to be here. Well, it's, it's so difficult to mix patience with, with aggressiveness. And the guy that can find that perfect blend usually comes out on top. And for Roncada, he has been the most dominant rider, four wins on the season, but he's also had some bad finishes where he was a little bit impatient trying to make things happen too quick. Roncada seems to be setting Burkhardt up for the same area that Fonseca passed him a lap earlier. Well, he's right there. It's, like I said, it's a little bit difficult. That same corner gets Burkhardt again. I think, you know, this is really, really have to be patient. Roncada just was patient right there. He wasn't following. He created that opportunity. Goes for the triple. That should give him a little gap now. He's able to go wide right there and not have to worry about Burkhardt coming underneath him. So it's Ernesto Fonseca, Stefan Roncada, and Burkhardt are top three with Nick Way, Kelly Smith, and Jason Thomas fighting it out behind them. Can Fonseca hold off his Yamaha Troy teammate? We'll find out the answer to that question and more when we return with more EA Sports Supercross. For everyone with a hunger. For everyone with the addiction. For everyone who rides, Dunlop Superiority. Welcome back to our second 125 Eastern qualifier for the final race of the regular season. Yamaha Troy Riders are one and two. Ernesto Fonseca, number one in the lead. He's won qualifiers before, two to be exact, but he's yet to win a main event this year. Ron Cotta is in second place, and it looks like he's closing in on his teammate. Starting to close a little bit. Those guys are getting down that straightaway with the same rhythm and timing that Pastrana was in the first heat. Pastrana really set the pace, and these guys have been able to match it. And in that last lap, they went under his lap time. It's 1.14. So these guys are moving a little bit quicker, probably because they're racing with each other. They've pushed the pace a little bit more, and the track isn't quite as slick as it was for Pastrana. 
Ernesto Fonseca surprising everyone last year with six regular season wins and the title in his very first professional season. Only has one podium this year, and that was a third place at Pontiac. Had a good race at Atlanta, but came up short of the podium in Foy. If the main looks like this, look for number one to prove that he's a good teammate. Uh, would you suspect he would pull over to get him a better gate position, David? Yeah, he's not going to let him by. He'll make him earn this. He's just got to put one more good lap in the book. He can't make a mistake or Roncada is all over him. This whoop section could be it right here. This is where riders are making the most mistakes today. He's following close, but he's right behind Fonseca. Almost identical through there. You see Roncada following the same timing that Fonseca had, jumping through there. They're not flitzing across the tops like they were earlier. Now they're starting to find a rhythm. Here we notice the interval change between Fonseca and Roncada as they both go over the triple with ease. Roncada stepping it up a bit. Oh, very close. Look out. Right there, I think Fonseca decided, I'm going to take the inside. Can't do the triple from the inside, but he wanted to protect the inside of that corner, took his chances, and he's still able to hold on to the lead, but it was close. Roncada, four-time winner this season, is coming to an area of it might be a good place to make a move on Fonseca. He's got a lapper in the way there. Ron Connick couldn't make the move. I think he had an idea of getting down the inside of that straightaway, try to put a pass, but the left rider spoiled it. Checkers for Fonseca. Ron Cotta taking second place. Still in good position to defend his points standings in the main event. Good race for Fonseca. That's the kind of ride that we've been expecting from Fonseca all year long. He's got to make him feel good. You see his teammate right there. Congratulating him. Good sportsmanship. They know they're riding a fast pace, and when they find out they went a second faster those final two laps than Pastrana in the first heat, that'll give them even more confidence. Watch this right here. Fonseca had gone to the inside trying to protect his line. Roncada jumped the triple to the inside, but still didn't quite have enough. The weather turning just a little bit brisk here in the Chicago area right now, but it's a hot night for Ernesto Fonseca taking the qualifying round victory. Checking out the wrenchhead.com results page. Way takes a third, then Smith, the Iron Man Thomas, Huskies, Robbie Skaggs, Burkhart, the whole shooter, slipping to seventh place. Ernesto, a good start, sir. What's going to be your last night with the number one plate, unfortunately? Yeah, tonight is the last night, and I think I got a... I got to, you know, at least win this race or Vegas, and uh, I'm feeling really good. I think I'm getting my confidence back. I, uh, I feel like I'm about uh, as the speed as everybody else, and uh, just hopefully Yamaha can clinch up another title today, and uh, everything is going great. Speaking of the title, I got to ask you this. It's the main event. Roncada's behind you again, and he needs a position for the title. Are you going to let your teammate by? Yeah, I think uh, we're, you know, we're working as a team, and uh, that's what we're going to try to do. Okay, the championship, uh, I'm pretty far back in the point, so I think we have to let that one go this time, but um, I'm going to work hard. Hopefully next year I can get my number one plate back. A nice young man from Costa Rica who surprised the Supercross world by winning the title in his rookie pro season comes away victorious. Coming up next, the 250s wrap it up. Stay with us. We're back with four EA Sports Supercross. It's our first qualifying heat for the 250s, featuring the second and third place riders in the championship chase. This is David Billiman. He's joined by Mike LaRocco. Billiman, 28 points in back of McGrath. He needs to finish in front of Jeremy, the main to delay the number one plate ceremony till next week in Las Vegas. Set to go. Our first 250 heat is underway. Not a good start for Billiman. He creeps around the inside. Salvage is a pretty terrible start. Billiman not the best of starts, but another Frenchman, Sebastian Tortelli, got the whole shot and moved quickly in the first place. There's Ryan Terlicki, number 53 on the KTM. Tortelli muscled his way through the whoops, opens up a pretty good gap. Billiman trying to work his way into second, got a little squirrely back there. Billiman trying to move up with Morocco in the mix. Two Frenchmen, one and two. Number 934, Villeman moving into second. 
And most of the time, Villeman gets the whole shot in his heat race and just pulls away. It's a yawner. This time, he's going to have to work for it. Tortelli's looked pretty good. We're going to find out right now how easy it is to pass on this racetrack because Tortelli is pretty solid. Tortelli, Villeman, number five, Mike LaRocco. He's kind of won a Supercross in quite a while, but he's been steady all season long. He's in third. There's LaRocco, number five. He's averaging a 3.7 finish per race, and it's paid off with the third place in the point standings. LaRocco has only been out of the top five one time. Look how much time he's lost to Villeman, though, in this opening lap. It's so critical on a track like this, a race of this importance, to get up there and be ready to go at speed in that opening lap. I mean, once you lose time to somebody like Villeman, you just don't get it back. There's not that many ways you can be faster than a guy like Villeman who's won four races this year. Morocco on the Amsoil Honda. His own independent team is the highest-ranked Honda this year. Smart move by American Honda supporting his effort, especially in light of what happened to Ezra Lusk and his injury. Good ride for Pavolny back there in fourth. He'll make the main if he can stay where he is. Tortelli's the kind of rider who simply is looking to improve this year with the Supercross tracks, a two-time GP World Motocross champion. He's really been a hard worker getting experience in Supercross, a different animal than that natural terrain track of motocross. Right now, Villeman is behind Tortelli. Tortelli looks back. Villeman the pass. Well, it, it, right there is, the, is a perfect example. It starts to bother you. Tortelli didn't get lined up for the triple, wasn't able to do it, tried to move over to the inside, so Villeman, he was riding Villeman's race. Guys talk about riding their own race. When you got a guy like Villeman or McGrath back there, they're so intimidating, you start worrying about what they're doing instead of just riding your own race, and right there is a perfect example of how it can work against you. Villeman is having a great first full season in the 250s. He's only been out of the top six once. And the guy in the lead is from France. The guy in second is from France. What is going on here? <laughs> These French guys are coming over here, and they have so much desire to race in the U.S. This is where the best riders in the world ride. This is where these guys want to win. They've made a huge commitment to come over here and get used to the lifestyle in the U.S. With his four wins, Villeman has 11 podiums, four hole shots. He's led 67 laps, all second place to Jeremy McGrath's figures. Let's look back at the past. This was a lap ago. Tortelli wasn't able to jump the triple, left the door open there in the corner. Villeman just took advantage. This time, both riders over the triple. That's a tricky one that Villeman just got over. And he'll open up another little gap over Tortelli back in second. Villeman's lap times right now, 111. Four seconds faster than they were early, earlier in the day. So the track is in perfect condition right now. It's obviously one that Villeman likes. He rides with such wonderful technique. A special characteristic, of course, to his boyhood idol, John Michelle Bale. Let's listen to him go through those loops. Look how fast he gets to the whoop section. This keeps the bike right up on the top, wide open. Just lets the bike float underneath him. It's a huge commitment to go in there with that much speed, though. I mean, these, those bumps are so intimidating. If you let the front wheel drop just a foot too low in there, you're going right over the handlebars. A runaway for Villeman now as he starts to pull away from Tortelli. Davy. Well, those triple jumps that you see David in right now, you see the three big obstacles where there's another obstacle you can't see, and that is the wind. Right now, the wind's swirling down here on the track. I got to think it's going to affect these riders, especially when they're up in the air like that. It does, Davy, especially on the, the triple on the far end. Every time he goes up in the air, he crosses the bike up, pitches the back end out against the wind, so it actually blows him back straight. Four EA Supercross coming up when we return.
100 people PC now. Welcome back. You haven't missed a thing. Team Yamaha's David Billiman, still our leader in the opening qualifying heat of the 250s. Only the top four making it to the main. David has taken a rather humble approach to his friendly rivalry with McGrath. He certainly has what it takes to win, David. Yeah, that's what I like about him is the fact that he's able to go out there and take it to McGrath. He's not intimidated, but when he does win, he kind of shrugs it off and says, well, I, you know, it's just one night. I've still got a long series ahead of me, and, you know, I'm trying to battle with the best rider in the world, and he always gives Jeremy his credit. And I think if it was any other way, he would probably irritate Jeremy to the point where he may not get those wins because when McGrath is uptight and really wants to beat you, he can. Let's go trackside to Davey Coombs. Why, well, down here with Craig Monty. Craig, David's got a long shot at best, but yet he seems like he's not even thinking about it out there, riding very smooth here in the heat race. Yeah, he's going really smooth. He's got out in front right away and seems to be going pretty good tonight. Do you think he'll be this comfortable next week when he goes after that half million dollars in Las Vegas? You know, it's hard to say. You know, he would really like to win the championship. The championship still, you know, is up for grabs, so he's more focused on that. Billiman winning the first two rounds of the Vans Triple Crown in Phoenix and Minneapolis. Should he win next week in Las Vegas, he would get a cool check for $500,000. Now, he always kind of shrugs that off and says, oh, I'm not really thinking that much about the money, but he's got to be. Uh, $500,000. How can he not think about that? I mean, it, next to winning the Supercross Championship, it's the best thing. It, it may even pay a little bit more than... Actually, the, the points fund for winning the Supercross Championship, although winning it, there's nothing quite like that. I'm, I'm sure McGrath would much rather win the title than, than have the extra bonus. And he's going to try to do everything he can and keep Billiman from winning that next week. Yeah, I think it translates, uh, David, to something like 3,500,000 French francs. <laughs> right now, he's aiming to finish in front of McGrath tonight. Mike LaRocco, number five, in third place behind the Billiman and Tortelli. Mike's best lap time so far has been 111. There you see the triple. He's crossing the bike up, pitching it out the other way, trying to counter for the wind a little bit. And he's two seconds off the pace of Villeman right now, and he's definitely going to have to pick that up and be a little bit quicker right from the start. He got a good start, but he didn't really take advantage of it. Mike is the third winningest active rider with eight Supercross wins. His best this year has been second places at Anaheim, San Diego, Indianapolis, Minneapolis, and Pontiac. This guy is so steady. I like to call him the rock. You, you just know that no matter what kind of start he gets, and then you see the white flag one more time around, the Rocco is so steady. If he gets, a, if he falls in the first corner, has to come from last. He still somehow seems to find his way to that podium. He's just trying to beat Billiman and McGrath. No one else can figure it out, so maybe he's just gonna have to wait till next year and come out with a different strategy. Seeing the checkered flag here would give him one more heat win to Jeremy, but Jeremy with his chance to tie with 11 wins in the next qualifier. And, you know, it, while he's cruising a little bit and starting to study the track, think about what may happen to it before the main event, ideas for passing and where it might get slick, he's still able to turn 110, only a second off his best lap, which he did on the third lap. David Villeman loves to entertain the fans but he never really takes chances before he gets close to that checkered flag. Now, Willem is a lot like Pastrana in that 125 class. He loves to entertain. He realizes that's a, a big part of his job, and he's always aware of what the fans are doing. And if he hears that it's quiet, he'll do something to get them screaming. Just one turn away. The checkers are ripping for David Willeman. What a crossover to put an exclamation point to this wonderful victory in front of his fellow Frenchman, Sebastian Tortelli. Mike LaRocco finishes up in third place. As we take a look at the Suzuki results page, a surprise qualifier in fourth. 125 rider Isaiah Johnson. Davey. David, tonight it's do or die. You have to beat McGrath in the main event, but so far you look really good in the heat race. Yeah, I feel good, but you know, the track is pretty different uh, than for the practice because they put too much water on the track, very slippery. And hopefully I can put my Yamaha up front and uh, race with Jeremy and uh, hopefully be in front of him to, to raise the title in Vegas. You're going to have to, or that's it for the championship this year. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, there's been lots of excitement between McGrath, Carmichael, and Wyndham during the qualifiers this year. Stay tuned. Those guys are coming up next.
We're back at Route 66 Raceway in suburban Chicago for our second 250 qualifier. Right next to Jeremy McGrath there at the gate is Heath Boss. He's got the parts of limited helmet cam. We're off and running. A trio of riders getting hung up on the outside, but the big three, McGrath, Carmichael, and Wyndham, are free and clear. Right behind Jason Fernet right there, over the finish line, double, no problem. You see it gets tight as they work their way into that chicane. Carmichael challenging McGrath. Carmichael in the lead. This has been a good learning year for RC. A couple of surprises right here for me. It looked like McGrath had a huge hole shot somewhere. He just made a little mistake. Carmichael took advantage of it, and uh, Kevin Wyndham looked like he had a horrible start. McGrath cutting to the inside, takes the lead. Well, you just can't blink or McGrath is by. Already pulls the tear off, just kind of <laughs> floats the bike through the air. He's relaxed, confident. In this. He owns this place right now. How many times have we seen him do it? Oh, a million. And you know what? Look at the lead he's already opened up. I mean, Carmichael's thinking, yeah, I got him. And... and Right away, before he even has a chance to settle into a groove, Jeremy just jumps right to the inside and pulls away. It just ruins your confidence. McGrath, RC, and Wyndham, one, two, and three. The only real points battle left in the 250s with only this race in Las Vegas left on the schedule is fourth place between Wyndham and Carmichael. Let's take another look at that big pass. Well, Carmichael's going to go to the outside, which will set him up perfect for the triple. Jeremy jumps to the inside, downsides that, goes right into the line of Carmichael. Nothing he can do about it. Beautiful move. You see Jeremy, he reaches over in the air, tightens up the play of that clutch lever. He's got a little dial on there. He can just reach over and tighten it up a little bit. He likes the clutch real tight. Doesn't want to have to pull it a quarter of an inch or a half an inch for it to engage. He wants to feel it right away. Pulls off another tearaway. I don't know if he pulled two or he didn't get it the first time and try it again, but those little clear film tear-offs over the goggles, that's in case you were to get a bad start. And each time you pull one, you get clear vision. Well, the problem with having four or five stacked on there is it makes that vision a little milkier, so every time he goes up in the air, he just clears it off a little bit more since he's got no one there to roost him. Some question when he took off the motocross, he's running only two races, if he could come back in championship form. Well, he's proved that. See if Wyndham can do something here with Carmichael. Anxious to see where the passing opportunities are out there and if Wyndham can find his way around. He's definitely on the pace. He'd like to get out there and challenge McGrath, but he better hurry up and get by Carmichael. McGrath already putting a 109 lap time in the book in that second lap. So he's already on the pace of Villeman, and I have a feeling he'll be able to click off even a quicker one. With them trying to pressure Carmichael, if not get close enough to make a move, Kevin, after two podiums in the first three races this year, had an eight-race run where he didn't contend. Lately, he's picked it up with three consecutive podiums, including his first win at Dallas. That's the difference. I, I have a feeling that if McGrath had been in Wyndham's shoes right there, he would have made that pass stick. Jeremy just seems to have a, a little bit extra on all these guys. I mean, over the years, it's obvious. He's won... He's going for his seventh championship in eight years, and the, even the year he lost, he had some mechanical problems. Otherwise, he'd have won that one as well. Nothing against Jeff Emig, who won it that year, but Jeremy has just been so dominant here. I have a feeling Kevin's going to try to stay close, make that move again before the triple. Little mistake by Carmichael. That'll keep Kevin in there. Can Carmichael hold him off? We'll have more EA Sports Supercross in a moment. back with more Supercross action. Jeremy McGrath was leading our second qualifier for the 250s, but the battle here is for second place between Carmichael and Wyndham. They've pulled away from Heath Boss, who's in fourth, which is the final qualifying spot. But Wyndham is picking things up. We're just a little bit faster than Carmichael in some places on the racetrack, and if he was in second, he might be able to make a little bit more of a run at McGrath. But you got to get around 
the rider in front of you to have that opportunity. You see the difference of timing that they had through their little different idea, which jumps to jump. They're still studying and trying to figure out what's going to work best later. Jeremy McGrath simply cruising at his own pace right now. Number one showing us why he's the best. Let's go back on board with Heath Foss now. Approaching a triple right here. Oh, you come up short right there, and it's, it's ugly. <laughs> this is the rhythm section right here where Carmichael and Wyndham were jumping through it a little bit different. They were actually tripling all the way to the corner there. And a faster section of whoops. This is where we saw Pastrana earlier ride a, a wheelie all the way down the straightaway. A little chicane, a couple sets of doubles. And you go through the mechanics area, you look to the right, you get your signal board right there. You can see how hard it is to read. I couldn't see what it said. And that helmet cam also gives you a good idea of the pounding these riders take and come main event time, it's for 20 laps. The battle for second hasn't changed. It's still Ricky Carmichael, then Kevin Windham. Carmichael has been able to take his lap times down to 109. That was his best lap on the fourth lap. And he was still trying to hang with McGrath. So all three of these guys have been able to dip down to 109, the same as Billman did in the first heat. So the pace. These four riders is all the same. It's really going to come down to, you can see how important the start is. Although McGrath was able to find his way around Carmichael into the lead, it does seem a little bit difficult to pass. Best race time gets the best gate position. It's the final lap now, underway. Looks like Wyndham might have had a run at Carmichael down the inside with the lapped rider right there. Going to ruin that. I'm anxious to see what happens after this left-hander. They do the triple, then they have that other triple where McGrath passed for the lead. If Wyndham can stay close, he might be able to make something happen there. Carmichael blocking to the inside. Kevin should be able to jump it. Now, I don't know if they were really able to make a pass there. They're able to, if they can get close enough, fool the guy into thinking they might be following to the outside and dive to the inside the way McGrath did. That, that seems to be the only way they can make a pass. Well, the pressure's been on Carmichael to hold on to second place. McGrath has been on a cruise here. Looking for his 11th qualifying win. Billiman and Jeremy would be tied for the top honors in that category. The checkers fly for Jeremy McGrath. Billiman issued the challenge and McGrath came back and showed him how to do it. On the Honda results page, note Heath Boss, the top privateer of the series, makes it out of the qualifier directly to the main event. Davey Coombs is with our champion. Jeremy, in the first heat, we watched the last man with a mathematical chance at the championship. David Billen put in an almost perfect ride. He came right back out and matched him. Well, David's been riding really good this year. You know, he's, he's learned a lot, learned fast, and he's right on pace, you know, with me now. It seems like... Uh, I got the rest of the guys by the points. So I don't think anyone expected Billman to be up there, but he's learning fast. You got one more race you got to beat him at. Can tonight be the night? Well, I sure hope so. You know, it's 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 pretty cold. Track's really slick because it's hard ground, and, and they had to water, and it, the water seems to be coming up, so the track's getting a little more slick. And, uh, you know, hopefully I can put my chaperone, Mazda Yamaha, out in front right off the start and, and not have to look back. Good luck at the main, Jerry. All right, thanks. So both David Villeman and Jeremy McGrath win their qualifying heats. The rivalry still is hot and heavy. Jeremy looking forward, though, to capturing his seventh title in eight years. More EA Sports Supercross coming your way with the semifinals next. It's the Honda Close-Up. Since the first Supercross way back in the early 70s, the sport has experienced considerable changes. Most were behind the scenes, not visible to the legions of fans that have grown with the sport. The image explosion that began in the early 90s started with the factories utilizing massive rolling billboards. Yeah, what a difference the early 90s made from a box fan, each rider having his own box fan and mechanic to uh, a show. We're putting on a show here. I mean, all the factory semis, I think Kawasaki started with the first one, and now every every privateer has, has his own semis. And uh, it's just made made the sport uh, tremendous. Um, all the fans can, can see what goes on. 
We have the mechanics here working in front of all the fans. They can kind of feel that one-on-one -on rela relationship with, with the fans, and uh, it's brought the teams together a little bit as well. Now we're in the lower portion of the semi where uh, we keep all the bikes, they store all the bikes, and uh, a numerous number of parts, and uh, when the mechanics are on the road, uh, they work on the bikes here, you know, all the mechanics got all their toolboxes here, and uh, now we've got the, uh, the video going after, after each practice. Uh, the guys like to, to watch the other racers and kind of, if we can pick something up on video that we uh, cannot see with, with, with the eye. The front part of the Honda rig is reserved for riders, mechanics, and Honda staff. It includes a small kitchen, a lounge for meetings and interviews, complete with office facilities with computers, phones, and a fax machine. A stairway off the lounge leads to the upper deck. The riders call it the penthouse without a view. This area here is just, just designated for the riders. Um, if a rider is having a bad day, he can kind of come up here and uh, get away from all, all the people, all the autographs. Well, after a while, that stuff wears on you. And so uh, each rider has his own bunk with his, his special little pillow and his little baby blanket, and uh, he can come up here and get away. The growth of Supercross continues. That's our Honda close-up. The riders are at the gate now for the first of two semifinal rounds. Remember, the top five from each semifinal advance to the main event. The others have to go to the last chance qualifier. They're off for running. It's number 83, Thomas Kaufmaster, and number 62, James Pavoni, both on Honda's dicing for the lead. Pavoni moves to the inside. You can see the big advantage there to be on the inside. Pavoni didn't really have to go fast. He was just careful, held the inside all the way around, and came out in the lead. There are the loop section. You see Hoffmaster in second, KTM Ryan Turlucky in third. Pavoni rides for the Chicago area DGY Racing Team, a shop that has spotted many promising youngsters over the years, David. Uh, you remember those guys a while back sponsoring Doug Henry, Steve Lamson, Jimmy Button, Pedersen. They had a little team together. I think they're one of the first shops, actually, to, to uh, talk to the manufacturers and have a, a team like you see now all over the pits. And uh, Pavoni right now, right now is making them look good. Yes, and he's certainly proving they made the right mid-season decision to sign him up. Right, look how hard pack is starting to get now up in those berms, just like cement. This is a really tricky section through here. With only doubling through there, you can see Hoffmaster behind him triples. You've got to have a lot of confidence to be able to do it. You have to be set up just right on the jump before or you can't do it. Pavoni, number 62. This is his best start. His best finish is a privateer, 14. Another technical little section right there as they go up over the wall there from the drag strip. And a little right, left. You've got to be right in the line, perfect to be able to double. This would be a great feeling for Pavoni to be able to lead this thing all the way. I don't see anybody back there that really, you know, is, is going to present much of a challenge to him. In the woods. Whoa! Hoffmaster's in trouble. He goes down the other retaining wall. Pavoni continues to thrill the hometown fans here. We'll be right back before EA Sports Supercross in a moment. Welcome back to the first of two semis underway. James Pavoni is looking around the corner at his first checkered flag of the season, David Bailey. What a great feeling, too. I believe that's his first semi win. And you know, there's not a lot of factory guys in it, but it doesn't matter. Anytime you can win a semi and get in the main, it feels good. Back to Matt Shoe, number 201, trying for his first main event of the year in a battle with Barry Karsten for the final transfer spot. Shoe edges Karsten. Checking out the Honda results page. These riders made it to tonight's main event out of the first semifinal round. Let's go trackside. Davies with our winner. All right, Jimmy, congratulations. Your first ever Supercross semi-event win. Yeah, I felt, I felt really good. I've been getting some seconds and thirds, a couple fourths the last, uh, I don't know, six, seven weeks, and uh, finally got a good start and put a win in there. A real thrill for the youngster and what could be the start of something big. Highlights of our second semi from Chicago after a look at a product that brings Supercross right into your living room. EA Sports. It's in the game. The leader in interactive entertainment software has done it again. EA Sports Supercross 2000. The most sophisticated motorcycle racing simulation ever produced for gaming consoles like the Sony PlayStation and Nintendo 64. EA 
EA Sports, in conjunction with Pace Motorsports, has developed an innovative program on display at each Supercross event. Fans come out of the stands and go head on head on the big screen in front of 50,000 screaming people. Most people haven't ever really seen that happen before, and when they get a chance to see these little kids up here living out a dream, they get pretty excited. As far as having the coolest game, if they like it, that's, that's great with me. We definitely have the coolest program as far as actually having kids come down, get the chance to actually play our, our game in front of 50,000 people plus. The program was so popular that EA had to change how they chose the kids to participate. Well, when we first started, it was kind of a hand-picked thing. Like, well, you know, you look like you're pretty good. Uh, come on up. And then parents started to get a little bit upset, saying, where did you pick my kid? So I had to actually make it a formal random drawing process. So that's what we do now. We have kids sign up, and, and then uh, we, we draw them randomly. What's not random is EA Sports' commitment to creating the most realistic video games in the world. Like all great leaders, the EA team is already working on topping their last effort. Down the middle. Well, right now we're already developing our new product for 2001, which will come out uh, just before Christmas. And then we're going to have a PlayStation 2 product that will come out in May of next year. So that'll be a huge leap in, uh, in actual graphic quality and playability. Back to Route 66 Raceway near Chicago. But David, the start really seemed essential as we saw here from the second semifinal round. Well, it just it continued to be a problem all night for the guys anywhere outside of Grayson Goodman there at number 65. Watch, they all got pushed wide. Harry Ward just dinks around the inside right there and comes out in good shape. Pete Suzuki's David Huffman was credited with the whole shot right here. Larry Ward took over the lead. It's been an unusual year for Ward. The last time he didn't make a podium was seven years ago. He's looking for his first one this year. This has been really tough, and injuries have been the problem, and then on top of that, getting used to a new bike. He, he thought when he first rode the bike back in that World Supercross round in Pasadena that he had a good finish there. That may not have been a good thing. He probably thought he had the bike handled, and, you know, it's, it's been a long year for him, and now it's a confidence problem. He's trying to build it back up. Number 20, Huffman, did not let Ward get away. In fact, he comes back to regain the lead. Ward just didn't have an answer. Well, I don't think Larry was motivated to get Damon back. I think he was just studying his lines the rest of the way. Up and Ward. That's the way things ended up on the Suzuki results page. These five graduating to the main event. Let's go down to Davey Coons. Damon, congratulations on the semi win. Tell us about the pass on Larry Ward. Um, I just jumped inside of him and blocked him from doing the triple. And uh, that was about the only spot I could really find a way to get around him. But uh feels good being back up here winning the semi, but um, hopefully I can make it uh, back up here in the main event. Good luck at the main. Thanks a lot. Just around the corner of the 125, East Championship will be decided. Plus, Jeremy McGrath tries for his seventh Supercross title, all coming up next on ESPN2. The final race of the 1990 Supercross season would decide the championship. Race leader Damon Bradshaw, rider number eight, had no title chance, but he flat out didn't like Sean Michelle Bale, number 22, who did have a title shot. Bale needed the win, coupled with an 11th place finish from series points leader Jeff Stanton, who was running somewhere back in the pack. The pair of riders rode the ragged edge through the entire race. Bale fighting for a possible title. Bradshaw doing whatever it took to keep the Frenchman from gaining the extra point. On the last lap, every fan in the Coliseum knew Bale would go for broke, and he did. He made the pass, but at the top of the peristyle, Bale left Bradshaw the inside line, or maybe Bradshaw simply took it. At the bottom of the peristyle, Bale had one more chance. On the inside, he looked like he had it, but the good line was on the outside, and Bradshaw was in it. Bradshaw opened a gap between himself and the French rider and looked to have the win in the bag. But watch this. The win is going to go to David Brown. No! No! He's got it! Bradshaw wins! The beast from the east took the win to the delight of the crowd. The championship, Stanton won that with a sixth place finish. The 
125s are at the gate, but the 125 East title up for grabs in the final race of the season as we take a look at the Kawasaki race grid. Last year's champion, but winless this year, Fonseca. The teenage sensation, Pastrana. Co-points leader, Stefan Roncada. The significant fact here, David, is the other co-points leader, Brock Sellers. He's way down the list. Right, well, he didn't and fare too well in his heat race he got hung up on the inside of the first corner now you'll see in his lineup here he has 12 pick to the starting line for the main event there he is right there on the right he's going to be pretty far over to the right side and so it, it could be a blessing in disguise everyone's gunning for that inside that could be a log jam he might be able to ride right around it but he's going to have to get out of the gate quick Brock Sellers has one thing in mind, and that's to get cleanly through that first turn as we take a look at the Suzuki 125 East points list. You can see both riders with 150 points, and Travis Pastrata only six points back. The race for the 125 East Championship is underway. Fonseca and Rakan in the clear, but look at Sellers. He was pushed wide. He just didn't get out there quick enough. He got pushed right to the outside, and the strategy that Yamaha Troy had worked perfect. He used Fonseca out there just to kind of run block a little bit for Roncada. Fonseca, Roncada, Nick Wave, Pro Circuit Kawasaki, followed by Nathan Ramsey in the Wolves. Well, at this point, if you're Roncada, you must feel like you've got it. All he's got to do is just be smart from here on out. You see him right there on the inside. He just tucks right in, goes around the inside while Sellard gets, gets pushed wide right here, clear up over the berm. He's going to have to take off from last, so his title hopes are gone. We've got official word that Robbie Skaggs gets the Yahoo.com hole shot award. On the outside here, he gets his Husqvarna on the white line first, but Fonseca's in better position to take the lead. Well, he was just tucking right around the inside right there, and Ron Cotta, it was a little bit surprising. He didn't get a good jump out of the gate, tucked in behind his heat, uh, teammate. He went into the first corner pretty far behind. Here's the battle for second place. Travis Pastrano working on Ron Cotta. This is not a great concern for Roncada, David. No, he doesn't have to beat him, but look at the pressure. Roncada not needing second place to win the title as long as he doesn't fall too far back. Plus, he must stay in front of Brock Sellers to win the title. Well, this is where you have to leave your ego behind and just not worry about what Pastrana does, how loud the crowd's cheering for him, how much he steals the show. If he can get by, just stay close enough and keep that six points in check. Make sure you walk out of there with the title. Whoa, Pastrana having a little trouble there at the end of the whoops. These three riders pulling away from Nick Way right now. Well, you know what's happening? Yeah, they are starting to set a very fast pace. I don't know if Way is going to be able to handle that. It's really just little mistakes here and there that he's losing time that he can't make back up. Anytime Pastrana tries something new, loses a little bit of time, he catches right back up. You see right there, he's definitely faster. Never before in 125 history have both 125 champions failed to win a race the following year. Fonseca would love to do away with that fact. Well, it's looking good right now, but I'll tell you what. Look at Pastrana right there tripling into the corner. He's putting so much heat on Roncada. Fonseca and Roncada, Yamaha Troy, one and two in this race with Pastrana in third. Wouldn't be surprised to see the Yamaha of Troy pit boards having Fonseca just kind of scoot out of the way and make things a little bit easier for Ron Cotta. But on the other hand, Fonseca hasn't got a win all year. Ron Cotta looks like he's got the title in hand, so they may try to go for the whole ball of wax, get the win and the title. David, this has got to be a blessing for Yamaha of Troy to have two riders out in front with Ron Cotta gunning for the title. There's uh, team manager Eric Kehoe. He's got to be thinking happy thoughts. Oh, he must be real happy with the way that things came out in the first turn because it did look like it's all a little mistake right there by Roncada. Can't do the triple. And Pastrada moves into second place, pushing Roncada back to third. And here's what's interesting. I don't know that Fonseca out front, he's not going to get a signal board. He may not know that that's gone on behind him. And he definitely needs to ride a little bit differently with Pastrana back there versus his teammates. Travis Pastrana, after passing Ron Cobb, is starting to hound Fonseca now. It looks like he's looking for the opportunity to make a pass, David. Well, he had them tripping down that section right there, but you can't do it in the same line as the rider in front of you. He's not. Look how close Travis is. And the main tires. Pastrana goes down. Ron Cotta moves back into second place. Now, I don't think that was intentional. I mean, like I said before, I don't know that Fonseca realized that there had been a pass back there. And, you know, if he was trying to break check somebody, may, uh, I don't think he would have done that to his teammate. So that's just unfortunate for Travis right there. Talk about 
earlier in the night. He needed to be patient right here, a little bit impatient, gets too close. Watch Fonseca get on the brakes right here to try to set up for this next double. Estrano just gets a little too close and paid the price. Not a very alert to get out of the way, and so number one, Ernesto Fonseca, who's looking for his first win of the season, his seventh career victory, starts to pull away with Ron Cotter in second, Nick Way moving into third. We'll be back with more Supercross in a moment. Welcome back to the final race of the 125 East season. Ernesto Fonseca, last year's champion number one. Our leader, his teammate Ron Cott, in great position to win the title. And all he's got to do is keep it on two wheels from here on out, and he's going to have it. And I don't know that he's going to really try that hard to get by his teammate. Brian Clark with our helmet cam. He's right behind Ramsey and Sellers. Brock Sellers fighting for a top five position. Well, there's a look at a block pass there on the pro circuit rider. Over the triple to the inside, he was able to make that stick. There's a look at Sellers, who's having to come from so far behind. What a heartbreak. The same thing happened to him in the first corner in this heat race on the inside, main event on the outside, and well, this kid is going to be so disappointed to know that he's led the series all the way to here and lost it at the final round. Our leaders, Fonseca and Rancada. Rancada with no hole shots this year, despite getting four wins. Uh, he's been the dominant guy in this class. The Pastrana has been fast at times. You know, there's plenty of guys that have stepped up to the plate, but he has stepped up more than anyone else. And I think he's the biggest intimidator of this class right now. He doesn't need the whole shot to get out there and win. David, I think Pastrana's accident uh, cost him a couple of positions, but more importantly, he lost precious time to these guys. I'll tell you what the problem is there is that when Travis makes a little mistake, he's still able to recover. And if he could have got around these guys and won this race, I think he had the speed to do it. He could have taken second place away in the overall title from Sellers. Yamaha of Troy, one and two, with Fonseca looking for his first win of the season. Roncata hoping for his first championship. All he has to do is place in front of Sellards, or if Pastrana wins, he needs a third or better to win the championship. Well, it's just going to be a cakewalk for him here. Just follow his teammate around. His teammate will be happy to get his first win of the year and not become a part of that stat you mentioned <laughs> earlier. And Roncata is just going to be so happy to finish up in second and win this title. Travis Pastrana is showing great spirit. He's moved into third now. It's important for Fonseca to kind of keep up the pace now. Right, because you, you can't relax. And just like in the 250 class we've seen this year, Villeman is one of those guys that you just cannot relax and settle into a pace with four or five laps to go. He will just catch you and put the pressure on. Pastrana can do the same thing. The never-say-die attitude of Brock Sellers. He's moved into fifth right behind Nick Way. As far back as he's come to catch Nick Way, Nick's in trouble here, and he's not able to jump that triple out of the corner. There's a few places on the racetrack where he's making little mistakes, and Seller, with the pace he's had so far, he's going to eat him alive. Way has been so consistent. He's never been out of the top ten all season long, but he's been in a difficult division. Yes, and he's he's looked at me a few times, cruising through the pits, going, man, what do I have to do? And I said, well, you've got to jump the triples for one thing. There's Sellers gets by on the inside. That's a huge triple. And if you don't get lined up perfect, it's a much smarter move to back down. So Sellers comes all the way back up to fourth place after being pushed off the track in the first turn. What a comeback. I think Nick Way is, is caught off the guard the same way that Fonseca was early in the season and just hasn't been able to respond. Here, finally, in the last couple of races, I thought New Orleans was a race where Fonseca may have, may have done well, and he got in the first turn crash, and, uh, you know, it, those results really didn't show his talent. Here, it is starting to show. David, in this scenario, continues team orders are out the window under these current conditions. No, it doesn't matter. I, I think right here, it's hard to say. What I, If I were in Fonseca's or uh, Ron Cotta's shoes, rather, I would just take the title, let my teammate get the win, and have a great night for Young Hawk Troy. That's going to be a fun part. Last year, number one Fonseca became the first rider to win a 125 title in his very first pro season. He didn't have the advantage of surprise this year. Ron Cotta last year was a regroup season for him. He was injured much of the season. You know, that's actually, it can be a good thing. You know, when you've got all these problems, you just you clear out everything and you just work on the task. And he's obviously focused. He came in here very ready. Pastrana, a fine season in his first year. Look at that. Sellers has caught Pastrana. So Sellers is riding with so much heart right now. And it's, 
and my hat goes off to him for having the comfort so far behind in both the heat race and the main event. I thought he could put that heat race behind him and get in the main with a good attitude. It happened to him again, and he still didn't give up. There they are, Pastrana, and a battle with Sellers now. Travis has it all, flash, speed, ability, and a special spirit. He's won two races on the season. Here's Sellers in the whoop section. Sellers, a little bobble. And Pastrana shuts the door. But Sellers is breathing down Pastrana's neck, that's for sure. In that last lap is weird. Pastrana had a, a way. Something happened there. He lost about five seconds that lap. He cases that triple. He's made a couple of mistakes. And at the same time, Sellers has really poured on the pressure. So a great race within a race for third place. Toyota Trucks presents more EA Sports Supercross when we return to the Chicago area. Art Ekman, David Bailey, and Davey Coombs in suburban Chicago for round 15 of the EA Sports Supercross. Number one, Ernesto Fonseca looking for his first 125 win of the season. He is our leader. The rest of this race is going to seem like forever. <laughs> he wants to get this win to get it over with, and for, for Ron Cotta behind him to win this championship, it's going to seem even longer. Fonseca's got a little room on Roncada now as we switch back to Travis Pastrana holding on the third. He's into lappers now. Triple his way right past Skaggs there on the on the Husqvarna rather. He never miss Pastrana out there, the lanky kid. Exciting. Just able to ride a wheelie through just about anything. Got those hand guards on there no matter what. Mechanics trying to wave the lappers off so that Travis can get around them. Travis Pastrana signing with Roger DeCosta, Team Suzuki, as a 16-year-old. It's fun to watch Travis in the practices on Friday and earlier this afternoon. He's looking at what the 250s are doing, trying to copy those guys. The heck with the 125 group. What's Jeremy and Villeman doing? He's trying to jump that on 125. Travis in his very first year collecting two wins, Daytona and St. Louis. Two very contrasting styles of track. That's true. Daytona, a long lap time and a little bit more of an outdoor and, and then the next week though in st louis i think he was already on a roll he had the confidence he had everyone intimidated and believing that he could win and not just himself but everyone in the field was a little bit scared meanwhile ernesto fonseca putting it all together if he holds on to this lead and becomes the winner it'll be nine different winners in 125 ranks this year we've never had more than seven before. Definitely the best 125 racing we've ever seen. So many guys up there. A little preview as to what you're going to see in the outdoors in the summer. Ernesto's had a good attitude despite the lack of wins this season. When he fell victim to bad luck. He could have a chip on his shoulder. Yeah, especially after New Orleans last week. I mean, he could just be like, you know what, just the heck with the Supercross season. I'll get myself ready for the outdoors and try to make that work. And here he comes right back firing and gets the win amongst all the other pressure and all the hype going on with the title on the line. He just gets the whole shot and runs away. Stefan Runcott in second place. He's got a 6.4 second deficit to the leader. Lots of good space on Pastrata, though. As long as Ron Cotta just jumps these big obstacles here, there's a couple of triples that are real tough on the 125. As long as he gets over those, just doesn't make a major mistake. He won't have to deal with any pressure down the stretch to be able to just really savor what this feels like to win his first title. A very likable, excitable guy, but patient on the track, running a stake free. Uh, I really, you know, Art, I like all these guys, I and mean, you just don't want to see somebody have to lose. But Travis is such a good kid, and you have to get the feeling that, you know, as young as he's it, he is, he's going to have a chance to win more championships. Roncada, great kid, he's coming over from France. And France wants the crowd to, to really like him. He, he does anything he can to really make things exciting in sellers. I mean, just he just doesn't give up. A lot like Morocco in the 250 class, and he's going to give it 120% tonight. Ron Cotta's giving it 100, <laughs> and Travis is giving it 110. Completely different personalities and riding styles. <laughs> right now, it looks like 100% is coming out on top. Seems to be working. I never understood the 110. The white flag is waving. The last lap is underway. Such a technical track. Coming back from near last, emotionally and physically draining number 18. It's showing right now as Ernesto Fonseca goes for his seventh career victory. Watch Fonseca, just floats around the racetrack. Came up a little bit long there, jumping that triple, but just shakes it off, does this double. He just is completely in control, able to set the bike wherever he wants. Doesn't have to move his body very much. He, he knows that 
he's able to just downside everything, wave to the crowd up there while he's jumping the triple, where other guys are having a tough time getting over it. He saw it way earlier, not go for it and get past. Yeah, Bob Troy a little depressed when Casey Johnson went down and was out of the 125 Western contention, but what a strong finish here in the East. A championship on the way for Yamaha of Troy. Yeah, a little glimpse back there of Pastrana with all the pressure he's getting from Sellers. He's really starting to close in on Ron Cotta now. I didn't think that would happen, but Sellers has really forced the issue. Fonseca knows he's got it right now, turning. The checkers are waving for Ernesto Fonseca. Never too late to win as he picks up the victory in the final round of the 125 East. Looking back for his teammate now, Stefan Roncata, the champion of the 125 East. Uh, the picture tells the story how they respect each other. And look at the sportsmanship of Pastrana. That's good to see. It's a great sportsmanship. And Pastrana, he knows that he has such an opportunity to win that championship and saw it slip away. He's got a good attitude. Saw Sellards go by. I think he's very, very disappointed. To have the lead this whole time and lose it here tonight. Boy, that's, that's a tough pill to swallow. A very disappointed Brock Sellards, number 18. Travis Pastrana trying to talk to him there. As we take a look at the Suzuki results page, Sellards battle back to fourth. We'll keep him in front of Pastrana, the 125 East standings. Rancada's second place, of course, giving him the championship. You know, this kid is so excitable. I just hope we can understand him when Davey talks with the new champion. Let's check it out. Good luck, Davey. All right, Stefan, congratulations. You just got yourself a Supercross championship. Davey, that feels so good. I don't know if it's sweat or tears on my face right now, but it's amazing. You know, I couldn't wait for that. And it happened tonight. I don't know what to say. It's just like Shady two couple weeks ago. I know that this is why you came. Stefan, I know this is why you came to America. You spent several years over here. You passed up a chance at the World Championship. Is it all worth it? It's worth it. You know, I've been uh, struggling a little bit the last couple of years, getting into the system and stuff, and I got done my things together last year, and now I'm ready to win. I'm so happy I won, tonight. I want to thank the sponsor of our Yamaha Troll, Fiat Laton. I want to thank Oakley, Fox, Ben Helmet, Yamaha. Mark Peters for building music track, my trainer Alan Gorky, my mechanic, Eric Q, my girlfriend, my parents, everybody. Thank you. It's amazing. Congratulations, you're the champ. <laughs> Ron Cotta tried to copy the scream of Shea Bentley of two weeks ago when he won the 125 West. There he is hugging his team owner, Phil Alderton. Let's check out the Suzuki 125 East points chart now as Ron Cotta wins by four. This year with Shea Bentley winning the 125 West by just two points, the combined East-West margin of six points is the tightest 125 ever. Our race winner who came into the season, the defending champion, Ernesto Fonseca, is with our Davy Coombs. Well, Ernesto, I know it wasn't the best season for you carrying the number one plate, but at least you came out here tonight and got a race win. Yeah, it's uh, the last race, and... Uh... It took me a while to, to get here. It feels good. It's uh, the first time I've been at the top of the podium this year. And uh, I just want to thank Yamaha Troy. My bike's been working really good. Uh, Dean's not here, and uh, I know he helps me out a lot with everything, not really only the bike. Mentally, he's been, he's been behind me and everything. And my mechanic, I want to thank him, too. Thanks a lot, the whole team. And, uh, and you know, it's been a great season. I think uh, I didn't get the number one plate, but at, at least it stayed in our team. And uh, that's one good thing. Just want to thank uh, Osho, Oakley, everybody, Fox, uh, Alpine Stars, DC Shoes. Everybody, thanks a lot, and uh, hopefully I can get my number one uh, plate next year back. So the 125 title stays in the family, Yamaha of Troy. Stefan Rancata, the second 125 champion from France. You might recall, Mikel Pichon got back-to-back -back titles in 1995 and 96. Will Rancata arrive 250s next year, or will he defend his 125 title, David? Uh, I don't know. Your guess is good as mine. And, you know, it seems like he's been in this 125 class for a while, and I've seen him ride a 250, and I'd like to see him there more often, but it's nice to run that number one plate. Ron Cotta holding up the number one plate. The 250 championship is yet to be decided. Will another Frenchman, David Villeman, delay the glory for the six-time champion, Jeremy McGrath? We'll be back shortly. Welcome back as Toyota Trucks presents EA Sports Supercross. On a very brisk night in the Chicago area, the fans are awaiting the 250 main. Here's how the Suzuki results page looked after the last chance qualifier with Jimmy Wilson and Iron Man Jason Thomas making the field. Thomas now making both the 125 and 250 mains. Once again, I think he's done that seven times this year. 
as we take a look at the Toyota truck starting grid with Jeremy McGrath and David Villeman. The young Frenchman went out and set the high standard in qualifying, but Jeremy came right back to post the quicker qualifying time. I believe Villeman can match Jeremy's pace. That's going to be the showdown right there, and I think the first turn is going to tell the story it has all night. Once again, we've seen here in the starting lineup many privateers. In fact, we have 11 privateers once again making the 20-rider gate. 30-second board is up. When it goes sideways, we'll have five to ten seconds of rev time before they take off from that gate. I'll tell you what I find interesting. You see Villeman right there just dialing in his clutch lever for that play. Most of the good guys see Carmichael right there, Wyndham. They're all lined up pretty much to the inside. They know it's going to be a big advantage. Jeremy, however, is lined up way to the outside. There he is. He's got... Grayson Goodman, his friend, and great starter just to the inside of him, and he's going to have to get an excellent reaction to have a chance in that first corner. Number Sellers. And they're off and running. The main event from Chicago is underway. Jeremy McGrath pulling out in front. He got the whole shot. Look at the inside. Villeman gets held up behind Ricky Carmichael. R.C. going down. Uh, that inside did not pay off that time, and Jeremy, he, he didn't do anything dirty there. He just controlled the line because he got such a great jump out of the gate. He went right to the inside and bunched everyone up. Jeremy McGrath capturing his seventh hole shot of the season, getting the Yahoo.com hole shot award. That's a thousand bucks. Kevin Wyndham, number 14. This could be a good battle. Team Honda in second. Number 10, Larry Ward on the Team Kawasaki bike in third. I'll tell you what, what a boost for Jeremy right here to have an advantage to wrap this thing up tonight. Look, looking for Villeman, he's still, here he comes finally into the corner, mid-pack. Number 934. He's already passed so many riders. He was last, except for Carmichael. He's not able to jump that triple right there. So as he's moving through the pack, even though he's fast and can match McGrath's pace, he's losing time right now. There you see Villeman in 17th place. Carmichael is still in last. He's not finishing the season as he'd hoped. He wanted to be on the podium for the last three races of the year. Now, Villeman's got his work cut out for him. He's got Thomas, number 51, and Damon Huffman, number 20, next on his pass list. He's saying hello, goodbye to number 51, Thomas, as we go out in front to our leader, Jeremy McGrath. Number 14, hanging with him, Kevin Wyndham, right behind him. I'll tell you what, Kevin may have a chance here tonight, Art. This track is starting to look a lot like Dallas did, and Kevin's hanging right there. Let's get a start again. Watch McGrath. Excellent reaction. Just goes right to the inside. No one's got anywhere to go. It looks like Carmichael right there hits a tough block, falls down. Villeman's got to go all the way around the outside. Well, what a frustrating scenario for Villeman, who's trying to take this race to the last round. Here's from Heath Boss. He's got McGrath right to his left. Look at McGrath. Right to the inside. No room for anybody. Great shot, Heath Boss with the helmet cap. There you can see Wyndham moving in front of Ward into second place. Back to live action, Jeremy McGrath still has Kevin Wyndham hounding him. Wyndham has the speed, he's coming off three consecutive podiums, including his first win of the season. That, of course, took place at Texas Stadium. Here's where McGrath has got to be smart, and, and he just knows that if he's able to just maintain this pace, not make a major mistake, leave the door open for Kevin, it's the guy that's going to make the fewest mistakes. Jeremy has proven to be the best at that over the years. He's going for title number seven out of eight years, and I think that he's going to just drive his pace, see if Kevin makes a couple of mistakes, lose that time. If he does, he's not going to be able to get it back. Jeremy's just too good. Kevin Wynn to make some good time in the whoop section right there. Does Jeremy work a guy like Wyndham a little bit like a long-distance runner, David? I mean, it seems like he has so much in reserve when he's challenged. I, I believe that Jeremy's riding around at about 95, 98% of his, of his capacity. And then every once in a while, he'll recognize that he needs to pick up the pace a little bit, or he makes a mistake, and he needs to make that time back up. He can go to that 100% and not go out of his comfort zone. That's why you see him you know, stay healthy all these years and not make big mistakes or take huge chances. Jeremy McGrath, Kevin Windham, one and two on this converted drag strip. You see the retaining walls there, those white walls. Those are permanent walls, and they had to build this track around those obstacles. It wasn't easy. There's one of the sections right there, up and over the wall, a little right left into a double. That These guys are jumping feet on the pegs of a line that's only about six inches wide, if that. If they miss that line, they get real spin, and they can't make the double. Into the whoops once again. We'll see if Wyndham can make up more time. And Jeremy turned it up again. 
look at those things that Jeremy does all day long. And then in the main, he just he pulls out a little something extra. Kevin's starting to find that out. See, he's not losing seconds, he's losing inches. And that's what it's come down to these days. When I raced, we used to gain a second or two a lap. Jeremy right now answering the challenge from Kevin Windham. Not counting Daytona, this has got to be one of the longest lap times we've had this season. David, you were telling me earlier you didn't think that endurance would come into play here like it might next week in Las Vegas. And it'll be in the 90s there, and yeah, a longer lap time, longer race. It's going to wear on you here. I don't think it's a problem. Look at this. Kevin Windham now starting to pull closer to McGrath. Jeremy McGrath is after his seventh Supercross championship. When we come back, we'll return to this great action between McGrath and Windham. Back before EA Sports Supercross is Jeremy McGrath, who's starting to tuck away his seventh Supercross championship in eight years. An absolute phenomenal record. He opens up that lead a little bit more and starts thinking about, yeah, I think I got this. Once again, he starts to pull those tearaways and he's climb up in the air off the triple. It's, you start the race with quite a few just in case you're back there in the pack and need clear vision. But the problem with stacking four or five of those things on there is it makes your vision a little bit milkier. So he's just making that vision a little bit better. Look at Villeman now just carving into this top five. Villeman having a great first full season in the 250s. Four wins, 11 podiums, four hole shots, leading 67 laps on the season, and currently in second place behind Jeremy McGrath with the points. But all of those statistical categories, he's second only to McGrath. He has been so impressive. He is for real. Imagine this is his first full 250 season, and next year I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of guys, including Jeremy, that are going to take him very serious. The battle for fourth is on with Tortelli, number 21, right behind Larry Ward, number 10. And then you've got number five, Mike LaRocco. That might be a tough assignment for Philip. Well, LaRocco is going to be tough to pass. Tortelli, he was able to work his way by him in the heat race. Philip coming up a little bit short right there off the triple. That's because he tried to take a completely different line in case it was a mistake by LaRocco. But I'll tell you what's impressing me about Philip so much is that watching the second practice out here this afternoon, it just didn't look like there was anywhere for the top five or six guys to get around each other unless somebody blew it. And right here, Philemon is being able to carve right up to him. All kinds of close action right now. How difficult is it to change your timing with the riders so close in front of you like Philemon has right now, David? Well, the thing about Villeman is that he's had to pass every single rider in the race to get up to this point. So he's used to taking different lines. That'll be to his advantage here when he tries to work his way around Larocco and Flotelli. I think he's going to catch these guys by surprise. Coming up through the pack, Villeman. He said this was his kind of track during practice. He really enjoyed it. It fit his brilliant style. And, of course, right now he has the assignment to get in front of Mike Larocco. And don't forget the next race in Las Vegas. Fans, he's going to go for the Vans Triple Crown. If he wins in Vegas, he takes home $500,000 winning all three rounds. This is the battle for third. Sebastian Tortelli starting to put the challenge to number 10, Larry Ward of Team Kawasaki. Tortelli comes to the inside now. Ward is not making it easy on Sebastian, that's for sure. They're going bar to bar now. Sebastian currently sixth in points. Can he make the move? Yes, takes the veteran. Here's the tough part for Larry Ward right now. He's been up there in third this whole time. He's been put it in cruise mode. He thought he was able to hold on to it, but it messes up your concentration when somebody gets around. Now he's got all that pressure back there. Here they come. Rockwell gets around, and I don't, I don't think it's going to be too long before Villeman can get around him as well. We're telling number 21. Morocco number five in the Amsoil Honda, an independent team, the leading Honda rider this year, 30 points. We go back to our leader, Jeremy McGrath. McGrath just concentrating on not making a key mistake. You talk about calm, cool, and collected. Well, he's only made one or two mistakes out there, and they didn't really cost him much time. There's a look from Heath Boss, working his way up over that retaining wall into the whoop section. He's about two and a half, three feet deep. They don't look it, but they are. It takes so much strength to get all the way through there. Then you have this double into the corner at the end. You don't even really charge to that corner because you're so tired from on the whoop section and make, making sure you get through that. 
This would normally be a triple over that last bump. Boss comes up a little bit short right there, playing it safe. He makes the triple there. Up onto that little plateau, off over that. It's busy straight away, and as soon as you make this corner, another triple. Makes that one as well. Jeremy is elected to take the inside into that corner and double. That's how he passed Carmichael earlier in the night in the heat race. Took him by surprise. He's figuring inside and inside. Get over the double clean. It comes out about the same. He doesn't have to take that chance going wide and jumping the triple. Phenomenal shot on board with Heath Boss. Top privateer in the series. This could be his best finish. We to show that start was so important. This is another straightaway of whoops coming back the other way. A little bit more rolling. This is where... Estrada had his problems running him back at Fonseca earlier in that 125 minute. If Boss holds this position, he'll tie the best finish of the season for a privateer. Here's the battle, Villeman into the corner. Wow, Villeman just stuffed LaRocco right there to the inside. I'm glad to see some aggressive riding, and that's how you have to pass here. You've got to get in there and bump a little bit. Tortelli probably thinks he's still got LaRocco back there. Boy, will he be in for a surprise? Billiman is not messing around out here, and he is turning 108 lap time to McGrath's 110 out front. He's still got time to catch second. An absolutely outstanding ride for number 934. Triples into that corner right behind Tortelli, matches his pace, rushes him down the straightaway, hops four of those rollers right there, just closes in. Billiman seems so confident with the subject of Jeremy McGrath's approach. He's humble about it, but I think he knows inside himself that uh, he can beat McGrath. He's certainly shown that confidence here during his initial rookie year. Yeah, he's just not intimidated at all. Look at that. Oh, a little mistake. And here comes Morocco back again, number five. Morocco cutting to the inside. Billiman wants it back again. A little rubbing of plastic. That was so heads up right there by Villeman. He keep his composure from the mistake he made. He, he wasn't even straightened back out. He was already looking over at an opportunity to get LaRocco back. Took him completely by surprise. And if he hadn't have made that pass, he'd still be on LaRocco and may not have a shot at it. Here he makes the move on Tortelli. The two Frenchmen, Villeman passing number 21, Sebastian Tortelli. This is the kind of stuff we used to see from Jean-Michel Bale. Just come out of nowhere and just get guys so quick. David Philippin moving up through the ranks. We'll be back with more EA Sports Supercross in a moment. Call 1-800-CLASSIC today. Welcome back to Juliet, Illinois, near Chicago, as Jeremy McGrath tries to put the clamps on his seventh Supercross title on board with Heath Boss. This is that triple, the far end, he's not able to do. He's got a rider in front of him. It's like uh, Doug Stone. Here comes McGrath. McGrath lapping and watch this triple they're approaching. These guys are at least 30 feet in the air. What an awesome sight. That's... I don't think Boss is going to see the sight of McGrath much longer. No, watch through here. McGrath triples that, triples all the way to the corner. He picks up another about four or five bike links, and just little by little, he's gone. Look at this. He's got almost a whole straightaway, and he just passed Boss a moment ago. Jeremy McGrath, who started the season with two straight wins at Anaheim, dropped two to Villeman, and then came back with four straight wins leading all 80 laps to really give him a big boost toward this championship. He's now finding himself out in front, a stake free, and not far from the ultimate glory of winning another championship. I'll tell you what, whenever Jeremy has had to dominate, he has. And whenever he's needed to get the start, he has. Tonight was so important, and, and it was just a huge confidence, display of confidence for him to line up that far to the outside and go, you know what, I'll just be out here, I'll get the start I need, and just control it. He had to do it, otherwise he'd have been over the first turn, just like so. Let's take a look at some of the trouble times for Billiman in the whoops. Well, watch Billiman here. He gets a little out of shape, goes off. He actually almost goes off the racetrack. Hits a tough block right there, but look at it. He looks to his right. Morocco gets him back, he sees an opportunity, and that Cobra strikes right back, takes LaRocco completely by surprise, and just shortly after that, he got around Tortelli as well. I mean, just takes two guys, he wasn't even under control, he was able to make those passes. Wow, that's, that's great track awareness, almost like a sixth sense. Well, I'll tell you what, this, he has taken that from last place nearly, all the way up to have a shot at Wyndham, who was right there with McGrath for the first six laps of this race. So that 108 lap time that he's turning to McGrath's 110 has not changed. He's been able to do that the entire race, and he's caught Wyndham. That's number 14 right in front of him, Team Honda's Kevin Wyndham. He's a 
trouble right now if he's hoping to nail down a second place finish. Villeman on the charge. Windham is looking for his fourth consecutive podium, but Villeman is really timing this track beautifully. Well, the timing of Wyndham is pretty much the same. These guys are doing all the same obstacles, so I'm anxious to see where Villeman can get around, if he even can. I think uh, Wyndham tightened up in the middle of this race, like he's done in a lot of races, but he's been able to finish strong. In Pontiac, he was able to get Villeman back in the later stages of the race. He's probably remembering that right now. White flag is out for Jeremy McGrath, only one lap away from a championship once again. Well, I was about to say this would be a great feeling, but I don't know. He's done it so many times. It's just become a routine now. The motivation is still there, though. You can see that. I mean, the concentration, the look in his eye when we get a shot of him on the start. He seems so much more focused than everyone else, so much more intimidating. And I bet he gives nothing away to Villa in Las Vegas. Even though the team Yamaha rider is in line for the $500,000 bucks. Here's the battle for second place underway. Villeman in back of Kevin Windham. Tries him to the inside, but Windham shuts the door. You better not even leave it open to crack, or Villeman's going to find his way through. David Villeman to the inside. Bumps him a little bit, and Villeman, an amazing run now, comes from the near back of the pack all the way back to second place and another podium. What a ride. You look at Jeremy McGrath. I don't think Wyndham left much room there. He's, that's got to have him a little bit surprised. Some of the last lap, Villeman passes into second place, and here is Jeremy McGrath making the turn. The celebration has already started. The checkers for Jeremy, his ninth win of the year, the 69th of his Supercross career. And Villeman finishes in second, Wyndham in third. They were only about four seconds behind Jeremy. There's Jeremy's mother there, his girlfriend on the right, his sister, Tracy. And there's Larry Brooks, the team manager of Mazda Chaparral Yamaha, grabbing him right away. Larry Brooks, an important part of this team. He is, and, and having raced before, he understands Jeremy's thinking. They walk the track together. I'll tell you what, though, watching him yesterday in practice, he didn't look that sharp, and I don't think he rode that much this week, and he's still able to pull it out of the bag somehow. This is the first time since 1996 that Jeremy's actually won the title with a victory on the track. He needed only a second or a third or fourth place finish to win the title in many years. He's always had such a supportive family. They've got the t-shirts ready. McGrath's seventh championship in eight years. And it gives Yamaha statistical proof of their greatest Supercross year ever. 13 wins on the season. We'll be right back to hear from the champion in a moment. Ride red. All right, Jeremy, there it is. Title number seven. You made it look easy. Well, you know, I got a good start tonight. The start was really important. The turn was really sharp at the end, and my Chaparral Mazda got me right out in front, and I, I, I hung down low in the corner trying to protect my whole shot. In the heat race, I kind of went outside, and, and RC got by me there. So I shut it down and tried to hold the start, and, and I got it. Well, listen, congratulations on a seventh championship. Will we see number eight next year? Well, I'm definitely racing next year. I'm not. I'm not uh, th thinking about retiring yet. I seems like every year I get older, and they got a new guy for me. But you know, I'm ready to go. And you know, we got seven. Maybe we can get eight. I don't know what's stopping him. As David Billman looks forward to the final round of Vegas, the Vans Triple Crown $500,000 bonus. Jeremy's won all four Wrenchhead.com SFX Super Fun races. That's an additional 80,000 for just those four races alone. Here's the Toyota Trucks results page. McGrath, Villeman, and Wyndham on the podium. LaRocca and Tortelli rounding out the top five. Heath Foss did, in fact, equal the best performance of the year for a privateer in ninth place. David Villeman showing us he's ready and willing to go to Vegas for motorcycles' biggest prize in Las Vegas. One more race on the schedule. McGrath has the title. But Villeman has made it close on the Honda point sheet. Villeman came within 28 points of the champion. Let's go back to the victory podium and Davey Coombs with our runner-up on the season, David Villeman. Well, David, that start killed you tonight. Yeah, Ricky crashed in front of me. He's a bad with his foot peg, and I was stuck behind him, and uh, I started last, and uh, I was running smooth, and I had a good line, and uh, I could catch a lot of guys, and I got second. That's, that's good with the start, but I wanted to win tonight because I wanted, uh, I wanted to hold Jeremy uh, until Vegas, but 
we'll see next week. Next week in another race, and uh, maybe uh, I will race for the Vans Supercon. That's right. You have one chance, one race, 20 laps, half a million dollars. You have to be excited about that now. Yeah, I'm a little bit, but I don't care too much about money. I just care about the win. But that's for sure. It would be great if I win and uh, I get the, the, the triple crown. But, you know, we'll see next week. Right. And joining us here right now is the third place finisher tonight. This is Kevin Wyndham. Kevin, you looked great in the beginning. You had Jeremy right there in your sights, and then you just lost a little bit of room on him. Yeah, I, I tightened up in the middle, and uh, it's kind of been the, the story of the season. But, uh, you know, it's just like I said, I'm good, glad to be up here on the podium. Just kind of been, been up here floating around the podium area. And, uh, you know, only one win this year. Hopefully I can do it again in Vegas. But uh, looking forward to the, to the outdoor season and uh, really looking forward to Vegas also with the, uh, you know, the, getting the pay-per-view event. And, uh, you know, he made an aggressive pass of uh, Villeman that is on the last lap, you know, to to, uh, to go in the second. And, uh you know, I really hope I'm in the same position next weekend to, to try to take the 500 grand away from him. So McGrath Thanks. might not be the only one wanting to keep the $500,000 out of the wallet of David Villeman. Well, Wyndham seems a little uptight about that move, and yeah, it was an aggressive move. It's something you saw a lot more in the 80s, but these days you don't see as much, and Kevin just was a little caught off guard there, and a lot of motivation to get him back next week. A championship night tonight for Stefan Roncata. And Jeremy McGrath, the 125 East of the 250 crowns awarded in the same evening. McGrath, another sensational year. This has been the fourth season with at least nine victories. He's so much stronger in the head. There's guys that can match his pace, Wyndham, Carmichael, Villeman. These guys can all go as fast, but he's stronger in the head. In the end, he's always the guy shining. So it's on to Las Vegas for the final round of EA Sports Supercross next. Art Eklund for David Bailey, Davy Coombs, thanking you for joining us for the Chicago area. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network, go.com. <laughs>